a little bit about our uh, Spanish um, interpretation options. So over to you, Alejandro. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Alejandro Arrieta. I'm going to go ahead and provide instructions in Spanish for interpretation. Thank you for your patience. Hola a todos. Gracias por tenerme aquí con ustedes. Mi nombre es Alejandro Arrieta. Seré el intérprete del inglés al español en este espacio. Si usted prefiere escuchar en español, después de que termine con las instrucciones, vamos a aprender la opción de la interpretación aquí en Zoom. Cuando se prenda la interpretación, van a ver un icono terráqueo como un mundo que va a aparecer en la parte inferior a mano derecha en su pantalla. Si han ingresado a la junta usando un dispositivo móvil, tal como celular o tableta, quizá vea la opción de la interpretación bajo el menú con los tres puntitos que dice más. Como sea que aparezca en su pantalla, asegúrese de seleccionarlo y escoger el español. Si tiene algún problema con la interpretación, por favor avísenos en los mensajes de chat para remediar el problema lo más pronto posible. Con eso ya vamos a aprender la interpretación y les regreso su tiempo para comenzar. With that, I'll pass it over to our host to turn on the interpretation and get us started. Thank you very much. All right, great. It looks like that it's now started. So let's get underway. Um, welcome, everyone. Really glad everyone has joined us here today. My name is Nora Kern. I'm a transportation planner currently at the Denver Regional Council of Governments. We are a regional agency and uh, are currently leading the South Boulder Road Corridor Study. We're very grateful to be leading this study in partnership with Boulder County, the City of Boulder, the City of Louisville, the City of Lafayette, and RTD. So today is the second of our two public meetings talking about this corridor study. So with that, we'll go ahead and get underway. So if we can get to the next slide, we'll look a little bit about, we'll talk a little bit about the agenda for today's meeting. So quick preview of what we're gonna to discuss today. Um, like I said, this is the second of our two public meetings. So we're gonna do a quick re recap up top to talk about the project purpose, why we're here today, uh, what we're hoping to accomplish with this South Boulder Road quarter study. We're gonna do a, a short high, a recap of the first round of public engagement, which was in the winter, um, where we asked folks to share what they um, currently think about South Boulder Road, their issues, concerns, and their ideas for the future. Um, we're then going to jump into the meat of the meeting, which is going to be reviewing our um, draft recommendations and our draft vision statement. So this is definitely where we're hoping to get feedback from all of you. Um, and uh, I will note, um, we're going to have a couple opportunities for questions um, as we kind of talk about the recommendations in each section, um, as well as a longer Q&A question um, session at the end of the meeting. So um, as we're going throughout this meeting, if you have uh, questions, thoughts, comments, we would invite you to add those to the chat. Um, everyone, I think, will be muted throughout the meeting just to make sure we stay on track. But we're going to try to get to as many of your questions um, that we can, both uh, during kind of the, the recommendation section as well as at the final Q&A. So again, would encourage you to add any, any questions or comments um, in there. Um, we will also have a menti poll throughout some of the recommendation sections. So that'll be another opportunity for you to share your thoughts and give us some feedback. Then towards the end of the meeting, we're gonna touch just briefly on some upcoming engagement opportunities um, this weekend and how you can uh, come out and, and chat with the project team if you're interested. Um, and then look a little bit um, at the end of the meeting ahead and what's next for this corridor and for this study. So with that, um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the purpose of the study. Um, some of you may have seen this in our last meeting a couple of months ago. Um, some of you, this may be new. Um, so Dr. Cog is leading this um, South Boulder Road corridor study to really set a long-term vision for the South Boulder Road um, community and corridor. We are a regional planning agency, so like I mentioned earlier, we are working closely with the Boulder County as well as, as, well as all the um, cities along Boulder, Louisville, Lafayette, as well as the Regional um, Transportation District to really think about in the coming decades, what do we want um, South Boulder Road to be? Um, this is both about addressing kind of current issues and concerns, but also looking towards the future and thinking about um, as our communities change, as, as we grow, um, what do we need to plan for? Um, to make sure we're able to still get around safely and conveniently um, in the next, um, you know, 25 years, just as we have in the last 25 years. Um, 
I will note this is kind of a first step study. So we are really starting a conversation with the community as well as all of our um, stakeholders and, and our partners at the different agencies so that we can really start to the process to think about what changes and improvements might be needed and start to kind of plan for those. Um, I will note, so this uh, quarter is part of Dr. Cog's quarter planning program, and it was selected um, for this study because it's currently included in our region's long range 2050 regional transportation plan. And so this is a plan that has a fiscally constrained list of projects that we think will be most important for the region. And South Boulder Road is identified as a um, priority transit corridor. So that was kind of the origin of, of this study. I will note that um, because we are kind of starting from, from uh, zero, so to speak, we are looking at all the different modes along the corridor. So how folks get around on foot, on bike, um, in their cars, as well as in the bus, um, and thinking about what's currently working and what could be improved. So let's go to the next slide. Um, just orient everyone a little bit on what we're talking about. So we are talking about South Boulder Road, Table Mesa, um, starting in Boulder, the city of Boulder um, at Broadway, um, traveling through Boulder, um, through the Boulder County section, through Louisville, out to Lafayette to 120th. So you can see that here on the map. Um, on this map too, like I said, there um, we are looking at uh, driving, riding the bikes, uh, walking along and across the corridor, as well as transit. So you can see some key transportation features on the map there. Um, as I did mention, we did have an initial round of engagement. And so thank you to the many folks who were able to, to participate. Um, we had an online comment map where people could add um, pins to kind of outline their um, concerns. Um, and so based on that initial round of engagement, as well as um, we did a technical analysis looking at the existing conditions of the transportation network, um, safety issues, um, mobility issues along the corridor, we've come up with, with this um, vision statement. So, um, I won't read it word for word. You can see it here on the screen, but a couple kind of key things. Um, we really want to create a forward-looking transportation framework. Our region's changing and growing, and so we want to make sure we're not only accounting for how people are getting around today, but also how we're going to need to get around in the coming years. Um, we have a couple kind of key things we're considering. We want to address, again, current and future travel demands. We want to improve multi multimodal connectivity to, from, through, and across the corridor. So not everyone's traveling along the corridor. Some people are trying to travel north and south, so we want to consider that. Um, safety is a very high priority, so improving safety for pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers. Um, optimizing transit performance and really looking at how we can prioritize transit through travel time, reliability, frequency, bus stops. Um, and then last, we want to, you know, there we realize that there are very different um, types of communities, different land use, different contexts along this corridor. So we want to make sure our vision is serving the context of the adjacent communities. So um, we are curious what you think of this vision and if this reflects um, what you think about the corridor and what you would hope um, comes to the corridor in the coming years. So I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Michael, from our consultant team at Fair and Peers, and he's going to lead us through a menti poll to kind of um, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of talk a little bit about the vision. So over to Michael. Thanks, Nora. Um, yes, so please, uh, on whichever device you are either using or have available to yourself, um, please join us in this uh, Mentimeter poll by either going to menti.com and using the code 9889051. You can also scan the QR code um, that is in the bottom left corner over here. Um, and, and this question is intended both to, to get people settled into the poll um, and, and to get on logged into the, the exercise here, but it's also to help us uh, understand who is who's in the room and, and uh, potentially you know who, who is missing from the room as as we continue to engage with the public here. So um, I'm gonna leave it for for you know a, a little bit here. I see that we've got 13 participants at the moment. Um, I also see that we have about you know a little over 20 people on the call. So I'll give it just a few more moments for you to all uh, log in here into the uh, polling exercise and to provide your answer to the first question, which is which community do you live in or nearest to, whether that's city of Boulder, city of Louisville, city of Lafayette, um, another Boulder County location or outside of Boulder County. 
and we are seeing uh, six people from City of Boulder, and then uh, and then a fairly even split between Louisville and uh, Boulder County and outside of Boulder County. And we've got one person representing Lafayette. Thank you for thank you all for being here. And you will have an opportunity if you're not able to log in at the moment, um, you will have an opportunity to log into here um, as we continue to go on and other questions. This code will be at the top of your screen um, in the case that maybe you get logged out or anything. Please let us know through the chat if you do have any issues logging in as well. So moving on to the, the question that we were just uh, talking about and, and Nora was presenting about the uh, the vision here, um, we do want to know what what is it uh, that, how do you feel um, about this defined project vision? We've got the defined project vision again here on your screen, um, and we'd like to hear, you know, uh, your responses to this, it, that if it looks great and it captures your future vision for this corridor that, that's part of our study, um, that it mostly uh, you know, captures your vision, but you believe that there are some modifications, um, or if you completely disagree with the corridor vision. Starting to see a little bit of variety between our responses, but overwhelmingly you all are agreeing that that this is a good vision and that it's capturing your vision as well and, and in terms of what you're envisioning that South Boulder Road does in the future and, and Table Mesa Drive. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. This is really, really helpful and, and, and powerful information for us to know that, you know, the, the way that we are aligned or not aligned with, with the public here. I'm going to uh, hand it over to uh, my colleague to keep talking through kind of what we've heard uh, over the last uh, process um, of community engagement and all of the things that you all have contributed to and in, in, in how we have uh, taken that forward in this study. Thanks, Michael. Uh, hi, my name's Nick. Uh, I've been the lead with the consultant team on this project. Really excited to talk to you tonight. Uh, just wanted to recap uh, with that question that was just asked, and we'll get to this at the end, but we do have a survey that is open um, now that allows you to give some additional response and feedback onto that vision. So uh, wait for that, and we look forward to hearing from you in that way as well. Uh, just to recap, the last round of engagement we had earlier this year, uh, we overwhelmingly heard from a lot of people uh, about issues on that have been identified and ideas and really uh, got some great feedback online, in person, at some pop-up events, and with our last virtual public meeting. In total, we, we had over 300 uh, map comments that were shown where they, where they were given is shown on this map here, kind of distributed uh, throughout the, the corridor uh, with some areas that had had a lot more response, but we had we got some good feedback overall. Um, and then a lot of people engaged upvoting or downvoting certain comments. This was really helpful feedback as we uh, developed the recommendations. Uh, and so thank you so much for all, everyone who gave that previous feedback. Some of the key themes that we heard previously, uh, which are aligned to the recommendations we're talking about today were better bike access. Uh, about 45% of the comments we heard were in that category. Uh, a lot of comments on safety concerns and crossings at intersections, um, speed concerns, traffic noise concerns uh, were, were given, uh, congestion and traffic flow uh, concerns were given, and then better pedestrian access and trail connections and improved transit. So we had a lot of good varied responses uh, and, and all of this went into how we crafted the recommendations that we're talking about today. Overall, uh, in addition to what I just described, uh, the project team conducted an existing conditions analysis and a technical analysis, which included an assessment of uh, crash data and crash information that really looked at the safety uh, concerns uh, within the corridor, and those influenced some of the recommendations as well. Uh, we've also integrated uh, previous recommendations from other plans, transportation master plans from the communities. Uh, along the corridor and other uh, corridor studies or other, other studies that were done in the past. Uh, and then we conducted uh, coordination with all the agencies involved with the, the technical committee uh, as part of this planning effort to take all the information and talk it through and make sure that we're moving forward to things that are consistent with all of those 
uh, different um, different topics and, and sources that come into the recommendations that are in this effort. So let's go to the next slide. So overall, I'm gonna walk through the recommendations, starting with some kind of overall corridor recommendations that kind of reflect uh, the entire area that we're talking about here. And then we've broken down the other uh, recommendations into geographic areas, really focused on the city of Boulder, Boulder County, Louisville, and then Lafayette. So the plan is I'll talk to these first uh, overall recommendations, give some general background on those, and then we'll go through the other ones one by one. So starting with uh, quarter wide, uh, there's kind of two key themes uh, throughout um, and just understanding that the, the scale of what we've studied here is really at the visioning level. It's really to understand uh, what the issues and concerns are and really to establish that framework moving forward so that uh, individual pieces can be advanced uh, depending upon the timeframes and uh, the timelines of each of the agencies that are included here in the different areas. So the first one is to explore the feasibility of a consistent quarter-wide separated bicycle facility to improve traveler safety and comfort. Uh, this could take the form of many different types of bicycle uh, uh, improvements, uh, ranging from a uh, protected bike lane, uh, where you have some vertical separation between moving traffic and a bike lane, uh, a buffered bike lane, uh, a, a multi-use path that is separate from the roadway. Um, and so the, the vision here is to have a continuous facility that connects throughout in a way that feels safe and is usable uh, for people that want to bike the full length of the quarter. The other quarter-wide overall vision uh, recommendation here is to uh, conduct some further study on transit speed and reliability improvements uh, to be uh, for consistent quarter-wide transit improvements. So the overall goal of improving the, the speed of buses, improving uh, the consistency of, of travel time and looking at uh, overall uh, stop improvements to really improve that bus, bus experience overall. To demonstrate uh, just a couple of uh, examples to kind of get the ideas flowing of what this means, these are not specific photo recommendations. Um, for a specific area, just to kind of talk what type, what those types of improvements are and what those mean. So we've got a couple of visual examples of a protected bike lane, which can take a, a lot of different forms. This is one, one form that could take a, a buffered bike lane below that, which is uh, just an additional um, separation between a bike lane and moving traffic. Uh, the photo in the middle there is actually uh, one of the crossings on South Boulder Road currently, but just looking at uh, pedestrian hybrid beacons, um, uh, signalized crossing locations, mid-block crossings potentially at some locations, um, or median refuge islands um, have been a, a topic that's come up. And then the multi-use path uh, separation from the road, just uh, for walkers and bikers, uh, mixed on, onto a bi-directional path is another kind of consideration there. Uh, and then the, the image on the right is another protected uh, bike facility uh, using bollards and having a little bit more uh, buffer between moving traffic. So uh, just to kind of visualize what those are and kind of help you help folks understand um, what types of things, what does a protected facility, what is a safe facility through on South Boulder Road mean? It could be a combination of, of any of these things or even some other additional options. As we think about the same thing on transit, uh, the types of improvements that we think through our real-time uh, bus arrival information is kind of a key thing at some of the major transit nodes to really make it more convenient and make it more predictable as far as when buses will arrive. Um, thinking about uh, the addition of bus priority treatments or bus only lanes in some locations where buses may share uh, a lane with right turns or may have its own lane through some, some specific areas. Again, we, we haven't gone to the level to outline exactly where on the quarter that could occur, but just considering some of those types of things in the future. And then some other uh, uh, considerations for uh, bus priority uh, treatments um, in lanes and also at signals is another thing for consideration. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, I do want to open it up just to talk through, uh, starting with the City of Boulder recommendations. Um, so a lot of this is a combination of some of the things I was just talking about. Uh, but specifically, we heard overall uh, from a bicycle and pedestrian standpoint uh, within the city of Boulder, uh, the need to evaluate pedestrian and neighborhood bike route crossing improvements at several locations 
uh, shown here on Table Mesa uh, uh, when you look west of, of US 36 and then also along on South Boulder Road. This is actually a, a location that's actually in Boulder County, but it's uh, right where those uh, borders are uh, on the farther eastern side. Also thinking about some uh, seeking funding to implement some, some uh, Thunderbird Drive and Table Mesa Station and Bear Creek and Table Mesa Shopping Center underpasses. Um, those are connections that have, were previously identified in the City of Boulder's transportation master plan and uh, just kind of advancing those to uh, keep those in consideration uh, moving forward as, as great connections that would enhance uh, South Boulder Road. And then extending uh, multi-use path connections. Um, we've got two locations identified here, uh, one at uh, connecting to Table Mesa Drive into the neighborhood there, and the other along Foothills Parkway connecting to South Boulder Road. And then consistent with the overall corridor uh, vision of the improved bike facility uh, to study this more and, and work through specific improvements. Uh, more detailed study is needed for a lot of those looking at operational analysis and impacts of doing um, very specific things and that will be advanced in, in future efforts. From a transit perspective, uh, the number one thing that came up was conducting uh, additional uh, study at the Table Mesa Transit Station to really look at transit operations improvements um, and passenger comfort improvements, access and connectivity. Uh, we got a lot of really great comments about uh, very specific things in this location, uh, such as crossing improvements, uh, connecting uh, the gates together, really looking at bus priority treatments and some other uh, really kind of connections that could exist. And really what this needs is a comprehensive undertaking of what what could be done um, at the Table Mesa station. So our recommendation is to, to move that forward at a more detailed level. And then evaluating and implementing transit priority improvements that reduce bus delay, improve transit travel time and reliability and enhance the passenger experience, um, uh, especially along the Table Mesa section where buses uh, are connecting over to Broadway, but then on the whole corridor, as mentioned earlier, is to really remain open and study uh, for further improvements in that space. From a roadway and intersection safety, we did uh, identify through the process uh, a number of uh, improvements that could benefit operations, such as updating signs and markings at right turn slip lanes that would uh, encourage and ensure that drivers can be more aware of pedestrians crossing and bicycles crossing in those locations. Um, and then we have some specific left turn operations um, areas that were identified related to congestion and conflicts between vehicles, pedestrians, and bicycles, and exploring and implementing signing and striping um, to give more advanced notice of the westbound lane drop at Broadway. And then lastly, just overall thinking about speeds and monitoring speeds and speed, speed reductions is to explore that further with a speed study, um, looking at potential solutions of automated speed enforcement, with locations that would be identified and coordinated with other efforts that the city of Boulder is conducting. So with that, I do want to open up uh, the Menti poll here. It's the same link we had previously. Uh, we're just asking kind of overall your, your support of these three different categories. Um, if you can go ahead and log in and, and give it there. We are also asking right now, if you do have specific questions or comments to please type those in the chat. Uh, Nora Neurider will be, uh, uh, taking a look at those, and we'll be uh, going through a, a, a few questions for the city of Boulder here in a second um, as we uh, kind of get through this section. But so, kind of asking two things of you right there. So, if we can just take a minute to go through that. So, Nora, while we're while we're talking, if questions are coming in the chat that you think we should talk to here, let's uh, go ahead and get started with that. So I'm going to start with a question from uh, Michael Ledesma. Um, it looks like, and actually, yeah, there we go. If we could keep the recommendations up there. He notes that South Boulder Road uh, between Broadway and Moorhead has three pedestrian crossings. They may be called out um, in, in this image that we see here uh, that are deemed um, safe, but as the parent of a middle schooler, his personal experience is that they are very uncomfortable. Um, he wants that noted. It has been previously noted. Nick, I don't know if you can speak to 
the three crossings that appear on this image and um, what might be considered for those locations since those, um, the, it, it appears that the community does not always experience them as comfortable crossings. Yeah, of course. Great question, Michael. And yeah, we heard that loud and clear uh, through uh, several comments that we received in this area. And that's the three that we have noted here. Uh, one thing to consider in, in thinking through what types of crossing improvements and how that works, um, there's some bigger potential changes in the future when we think about protected bike lanes on uh, Table Mesa and other uh, multi-use path connection um, kind of potential in the future. Those bigger changes often can be handled uh, hand in hand and really influence what those crossing locations, what, what those specific crossing improvements would be. Uh, and so one of the things, and not specifically to these, but for every, every comment that we heard um, is weaved into these recommendations and is also being um, documented as part of this effort so that future uh, uh, projects that are identified and future studies that are done will utilize everything that we heard and be able to advance um, what we had uh, uh, coming in there. So thank you so much for pointing that out and making that a priority. Uh, we have a question from Elaine about the potential for no right on red in this corridor. Right hooks are still hazardous for cyclists and pedestrians. Is that, um, is that an option under consideration? I think Jean, Jean Sanson from the city of Boulder is on. Jean, I don't know if you wanna comment on that one on specifically on the right turn on reds. Yes, um, thank you, Nick. So Jean Sanson with the city of Boulder transportation planning team. Um, so we've been having conversations with our um, operations folks who um, handle the signals and um, signage. And that is something that we're gonna um, be looking at as we um, take a closer look at some of the signal operations, particularly the intersection of Broadway and Table Mesa, and then as and then the um, crossings over the interchange. And then specific to those mid-block crossings, there's another example of like, while we expect to have a sort of a longer range study of this quarter at some point in the future, there are probably some improvements we can make right now to like pedestrian wait times at those mid-block crossings and signage and um, looking at things like speed enforcement and, um, and, and red light um, uh, running. So to answer your question, I don't know specific to um, restricting right turns on reds, but as we look at those operations, that's something, Elaine, that we could certainly take a look at. I'm gonna ask one more question, which is really a corridor wide question. And I don't know if this is, if city folks wanna address this, but um, separated protected bicycle lanes and plowing uh, during snowy months. That's, is that an impediment? How is that handled? I can speak generally to the corridor and then if there's anyone else that wants to chime in from the city perspective. Uh, the design of a protective facility uh, really can influence the maintenance, specific maintenance needs. And so thinking about the width of a protected bike facility um, to allow for a specific type of plow to be able to um, use that facility is an important element of deciding how wide you make that protected facility. But sometimes uh, if if that if the agencies have other protective facilities, there is specific equipment that is uh, is is needed to plow those and is additional maintenance consideration. Um, but that is part that and that will be part of any future selection of how, of what type of bicycle facility is put in is considering the maintenance needs and how that will work and making sure that it can be plowed and, and used throughout all seasons. I don't know if others have anything else to add specific to the, your agencies, please chime in. Great. Well, we do have some, some quarter wide questions, but I'm gonna let you move on to your next set of recommendations and we'll get to those questions in just a bit. Sounds great. Yeah, we wanna have, we'll have some time for overall discussion at the end, but I wanna make sure we get through our other three different areas. So let's go to the, the Boulder County recommendations. So within the Boulder County section, uh, one of the crossing improvements I mentioned in the last one was actually in Boulder County. Um, but in addition to that, several crossing improvements were identified in this effort for safety, comfort, and access to bus stops and trails along this section. And these potentially include uh, clear markings, 
um, pedestrian wait time improvements um, at some signalized locations, um, and then pedestrian protect protections and reducing crossing distances uh, in some of the locations and making visibility improvements. So a long list of things that to be considered at these locations. Uh, many of these are aligned with uh, local bus stops uh, which make it even more important for people using transit to be able to get uh, back and forth uh, across the road in both of these locations, in all these different locations. I had a couple of other locations to improve pedestrian facilities, in particular where there aren't any sidewalks uh, and a demand to access the bus stops and other uh, paths and trails. And so those are, those are notated with that path icon um, in those two different locations. And then lastly, from a bicycle and pedestrian standpoint, is exploring options to increase the visibility of bicycles traveling eastbound uh, towards McCaslin Boulevard uh, due to the slope. Uh, that is a location where there's also a lot of uh, right turning vehicles that are going eastbound uh, from McCas from South Boulder Road on McCaslin. So that turn and where those bikes are operating is an uh, area that was brought up um, during the process. And then overall consistent with the corridor is exploring that, that uh, feasibility of a consistent corridor wide uh, separated bike facility. Uh, in this section that there's a lot more space available uh, than some of the other areas in terms of right-of-way availability. So that, that could take many different forms and that will be explored by Boulder County as uh, they advance future phases of, of this, this uh, South Boulder Road uh, project. From a transit perspective, uh, there are uh, a number of things. There's the existing bus stops. I should have noted this are notated in the small little blue icons. Um, so there's a number of bus stops along this area. Several of them were identified in our effort as, a, as, as needing amenity improvements and making the bus stops more visible and comfortable and easier to access. And the, so those are highlighted uh, at the 6400 block and also at 76th Street. Uh, and then consistent with the trans, overall transit study, uh, speed and reliability, consistency, uh, making sure that those in types of improvements are considered um, to improve the speed and reliability of buses that are operating through this section. From a roadway and safety intersection uh, standpoint, uh, we've got two recommendations here at two different locations to study and implement intersection safety improvements. The, both of the signalized locations at Cherryville and 76 were identified as high crash occurrence locations. Um, and so to look at uh, specific uh, improvements at those intersections. And then overall through this full stretch is really conducting a speed study to inform um, speed reduction uh, measures, including consideration of things like speed cameras and other traffic calming techniques um, to overall slow people down. That was one of the major elements we heard throughout was, was that there's a lot of speeding um, going through this wide section through Boulder County. And then lastly here, exploring noise mitigation strategies uh, such as sound barriers or fences uh, uh, in, the, in the location highlighted there in the yellow um, that was identified through this process. Uh, so I'm going to open up, uh, Michael, if you can open up the poll there overall, just wanted to get another vote here on, uh, on all of these different categories. And also if you have specific questions on Boulder County section or any other questions on anything we have discussed tonight, please put those in the chat. And we'll we'll uh, get to a few Boulder County specific questions right now. We'll get, we save some of the quarter wide items for later as well. So we can finish up with that. So let's see, we have a question from Howard. Um, I'm not exactly um, totally certain on the location, but Howard lives in Majestic Heights and the streets in the neighborhood have become dangerous with cars cutting through to avoid Broadway and the city of Boulder. And um, the neighborhood has been eager to implement traffic calming devices to deal with the spillover traffic. I don't know if there is um, a way to address what might be done in that instance. Yeah, well, Nora, this is Jean. Um, thank you. Yeah, City of Boulder again. So yeah, that's a really good question. And um, for several years, we did have a neighborhood speed mitigation program. Um, that program has been on hold. The city has um, sort of reprioritized to focus on these uh, major streets like arterials like South South Boulder Road and, and other larger arterial roadways where we're finding that um, we're having the highest um, incidence of injuries and fatalities on our road. So 
Um, to answer your question um, just very directly, we're, we're not putting money into things like speed humps at this point through neighborhoods. Um, but if you have specific concerns and suggestions for your street, I would um, be happy to provide my contact information and put you in touch with our traffic operations folks. Thanks, Jean. Uh, we have a question from Mike Perkins. Uh, would you consider right turn yield and merge lanes like on McCaslin and Dillon or McCaslin and Sherry? Making sure I understand that question correctly there. Uh, the question is oriented towards considering a right turn. Yield and merge, I think, rather than a um, no turn on red or direct turn. I think we need to understand that comment a little bit better. I think we're open to considering specific uh, uh, types of improvements that solve an issue that's been identified. Um, yeah, M Mike has clarified that instead of no turn on red, gotcha. considering merge lanes. Uh, there's there's various benefits of of thinking through the the different strategies in terms of the safety benefit. Um, so I, I think there are some some considerations that could be taken instead of no turn on red uh, at some locations to think that through. Uh, making it no turn on red does uh, improve overall safety and pedestrian safety and visibility. Um, and so it's uh, something that we are looking at um, throughout the corridor. Um, but haven't made any specific recommendations at that level as part of this effort. Amy makes a particular comment about um, South Boulder Road and um, at between McCaslin and 76, particularly at 76th. Uh, bikes traveling west on South Boulder Road are vulnerable to cars turning north onto 76, um, cars travel quickly, bicycles travel quickly, and the downward slope adds to the challenge at this location. Yeah, thank you, Amy, for that comment that was identified in, in, our, in our efforts here. And um, when we think through a protected bike facility, thinking through how bikes move through that intersection will be a really important element of that design. And uh, some of the things that could be uh, taking into account, there are thinking about uh, uh, different signalization for bikes specifically, um, depending upon what type of, um, of improvement is, is identified to advance in that area. So we have, we've identified that as an issue, but haven't, don't have a specific uh, design fix to that at this point, but that will be moving forward with, with, um, with the efforts that Boulder County will be taking. So thank you for that. We do have two more sets of recommendations to go. So I'm going to hold questions for a little bit and move on to the next set of recommendations. So our next set here is looking through Louisville. So we've got a number of things on the map here. I'll start with the bicycle and pedestrian uh, uh, things that were identified. Again, we've got several locations here. Uh, many of them are uh, similar in a lot of ways, have similar types of crossing improvement potential. Um, however, some of them already have some crossing improvements, um, like pedestrian hybrid beacons at Eisenhower um, and uh, Blue Star Lane, I believe. Uh, but uh, um, overall, it's looking at clear markings, looking at pedestrian wait times, pedestrian protection, reduced crossing distances where we can do that, uh, visibility enhancements and things like that. Um, at the beacons I mentioned uh, is, is looking at exploring uh, more clear signage uh, in some locations and general public education. We had a number of folks um, give comment as to having to wait too long as pedestrians or maybe not knowing what to do at those locations. So it's exploring that further. As far as improving pedestrian facilities, in particular where the sidewalk is narrower uh, between Garfield Avenue and Centennial Drive uh, is a recommendation and then also exploring from a bike perspective, exploring options to minimize the conflicts between bicycles and vehicles in the turning auxiliary and floating lanes at McCaslin and via Appia um, intersections. 
The underpasses that we have identified here are consistent with other city of Louisville planning that's been conducted and other designs specifically CO42 has already been designed, uh, but hasn't been funded yet, but is to advance underpasses and consider those for future uh, crossing improvements uh, at several locations here. And then overall uh, exploring the feasibility of that consistent quarter wide separated bike facility. From a transit perspective, uh, uh, you'll see the, the blue line on South Boulder Road. The current uh, RTD route does deviate from South Boulder Road to downtown Louisville on Via Appia and then back up on Main Street. Um, we are recommending here uh, speed and reliability uh, uh, improvements be done on specifically on South Boulder Road, but then also thinking through future uh, routing and operational decisions to think about potentially express routing and things like that through this section. Um, those were things that were identified um, to really uh, enhance that future transit experience and um, through through and to Louisville. From a roadway and uh, intersection safety, again, to implement study and implement intersection safety improvements. Um, these are the improvements we identified in the safety analysis uh, to mitigate the impacts of frequent high crash injury injury crash locations, uh, and then also to evaluate the operations of right turning vehicles near the shopping plazas um, uh, at several locations here, and evaluating left turn operations specifically related to congestion and reducing conflicts um, between vehicles, pedestrians, and bicycles um, at a couple of locations here. Um, the overall speed uh, was an issue identified uh, at these highlighted locations is specifically where we have have gone through um, and recommended to a speed study to inform uh, if there are any speed reduction measures to take, uh, which could include things like speed cameras and, uh, and other traffic calming techniques. So we're gonna open up the poll again. I know this is a lot of information coming at you. Uh, while we're taking the poll here, I'll just recap again. Uh, we do have our survey open. It just opened up today uh, and we will be sharing a link for that at the end here where you'll be able to go back and view all of these recommendations and give very specific feedback. Um, so there, there's a variety of ways to do that. And uh, we really encourage you to, if you have specific comments on these that you really want us to hear and integrate to go through and, and, and do it that way, we will definitely be reviewing everything that comes through the survey. So with that, uh, if you can continue to type your questions in, I saw a couple things come in. Uh, Nora, if you can recap specific questions, that'd be great. Um, I did want to note that Amy Thompson says I'm thankful, thankful for the three underpass recommendations because all of our Louisville schools are south of South, south Boulder Road. Um, we have a, um, a comment from Mark. It would make sense to have eastbound South Boulder Road traffic intending to turn north onto Continental View Drive to have a flashing yellow left turn rather than a red arrow because um, one has to sit through two complete cycles before a green arrow appears. Um, was that an intersection that was considered? That is one where I think uh, what's there is a protected only left turn. Um, that's probably what's causing the, the delay and wait there. And there's, there's some, there's some safety benefits and some other uh, considerations in terms of how you coordinate the signals and what type of left turn signalization you have at intersections. And so that's one. I know that uh, there's a recent signal retiming effort that's going on in the quarter that may have addressed uh, if there's been some things that could be tweaked or retimed to minimize some of those delays. Um, that may be something that is, is coming. Um, but definitely uh, thank you for that comment. And it's uh, definitely, we'll be passing that on. I don't think we have anyone from the city of Louisville on tonight, but we, we can pass that comment on directly. And I think we heard that same comment previously. Amy Thompson, this is on the west side of this section, notes that um, turning west onto South Boulder Road from McCaslin northbound is difficult due to the shared lane that can go both north or west, a bike box at that intersection can get bicycles in front of cars and could be helpful and safer. That was a of particular, of particular note. Uh, 
this is a more universal question from Mike. Financing underpasses is very expensive. <laughs> that is true. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Helen notes that education and signage at the Eisenhower flashing red is critical. Um, and I think we have actually captured all the questions for this section. We still have some universal kind of corridor wide questions, but um, that addresses this section. Okay. And just, I don't know if it was mentioned up front, but we will be uh, responding with uh, frequently asked questions, incorporating all of the questions that were asked tonight and everything that we're, we've been hearing, which will be made available. So uh, it looks like uh, overall, uh, there's some, some good support for most of these recommendations uh, from the slider bars with uh, the bike and pedestrian. Um, ranking a little bit more with more strong support than some of the transit and overall roadway intersection, but generally some, some support overall. So thank you for feedback there. Let's move on to the last area here in Lafayette. So I'll go through those um, specifically from the bike and pedestrian uh, improvements uh, that we were identified for recommendation is crossing improvements. Again, a key theme here uh, throughout the quarter is, is crossing improvements. Uh, these potentially include clearer markings, pedestrian uh, wait time improvements, uh, pedestrian protection, reduced crossing distances that often happen when you look at um, changing up some of those intersections, um, visibility enhancements uh, for pedestrian crossings, and then clearer signage and education uh, with drivers and pedestrians uh, from that front. Uh, from a bike uh, perspective, the, uh, the project that's been under construction for a while, uh, the multi-use path on the south side of the road between Saratoga and 120th, is to uh, finish that project and move forward with that. I know that's been closed for a while, um, but to connect that up with uh, with the rest of uh, uh, the area there and, 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 and finish that to make that those neighborhood connections across um, South Boulder Road um, what they are envisioned to be. And then overall exploring the feasibility of uh, a corridor wide separated bike facility, which you know could take into account that multi-use path, could also include other, other on-street bicycle facilities uh, in the future um, through future study if those are identified. From a transit perspective, we've got two major transit nodes and future transit nodes to think through here. The first one um, being recommended is the Lafayette Park and Ride. Uh, so considering improvements for uh, coordinated time transfers between routes um, and more comfortable bus stop amenities at that location um, and potential uh, shared parking opportunities. We also heard very specific things uh, were noted that uh, could be considered in future um, changes there. Like uh, what, what I mentioned up front is uh, um, uh, transit uh, wait times on uh, digital displays, things like that to consider in the future. At US 287, uh, there is future bus rapid transit service envisioned on US 287. Um, so this would be a, a station, a potential transfer point uh, between uh, two major transit services uh, that, that cross roads here. Um, so enhancing that and providing convenient transfers uh, between those routes um, as those transit uh, routes evolve uh, and placing attention there. And then overall, uh, evaluating uh, speed and reliability improvements on the full stretch here, but with some specific emphasis on the area in between US 287 and Public Road. Uh, that is an area that is uh, more, conge the, more congested than other areas of South Boulder Road within Lafayette, and it connects uh, up to the uh, park and ride and station um, on Public Road, the downtown Lafayette station there. From a roadway and intersection safety standpoint, uh, similar to some of the other areas, is studying and implementing intersection safety improvements that mitigate impacts of frequent high crash occurrences. So we've notated where those are along here that came out of our crash analysis. And then also understanding and conducting uh, a speed study to inform speed reductions at the specific highlighted areas here uh, that include speed cameras and other traffic calming techniques for consideration. 
So let's open up the poll on this last section here, uh, get some uh, voting going. I uh, appreciate all the, the, the votes that have come in in terms of level of support. It's really helpful as we talk these through to hear from you on all of these. Um, and did want to open it up for questions in the chat as well. I think we've had a few other things come in while I was talking. So I'm going to pass it back to you, Nora, if you can coordinate the questions, that'd be great. So Elaine asks, many years ago, there was a plan to extend South Boulder Road to Sheridan. Is this still the plan? What's, what, what, what is under consideration? Yeah, this was in some previous efforts, but I think it was, uh, uh, it didn't get carried forward in the regional transportation plan um, in terms of extending South Boulder Road past 120th. Um, Nora, Kern, if you do you have other comments from Dr. Cox's perspe perspective on that one? I know that was a topic of our discussion early on in the project. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Michelle is also on in case she wants to add anything from the city. Um, I think it is still aligned in some maps, but there has been some development that has happened um, in the inter intervening years that uh, would make it more difficult. So this study doesn't um, address it one way or another. Um, I think it's still an option for Lafayette to consider long term. Um, I don't know if Michelle knows uh, from the city of Lafayette staff knows anything more, but um, yeah, I think for now it wasn't a focus um, and there kind of are some new challenges that have come up with the development um, uh, east of 120th. Yeah, um, so the direct connection to Sheridan was removed with the Anthem development in Broomfield. Um, we did modify that connection to try to connect down to um, Dillon or Northwest Parkway instead, um, which is in our multimodal transportation plan and was in the 2040 Dr. Cog plan, but it was removed from the 2050 plan. So um, as a funded project, at least, I believe, Laura, correct me if I'm wrong on that. So uh, general connection um, east of 120th is still in a long-term plan, but not in any funded manner. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Amy, um, says that they get a lot of requests for improved RTD service in Lafayette along South Boulder Road with a particular request to extend east to 120th from a transit standpoint. Yes, we, <laughs> I agree, Amy. Uh, so there may be some form of um, service to 120th um, and South Boulder Road with uh, in next year's service plan. Um, they'll be going uh, serving the new um, housing development Willoughby, which is at 120th just north of South Boulder Road. So RTD will have service that will go to um, Willoughby and then come down to the park and ride, but it will not be continuous with the rest of the bus traffic on South Boulder Road. Um, and we are um, advocating for better and more frequent transit service along South Boulder Road as well. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, Mike has a two part question. Are there statistics regarding bicycle traffic along South Boulder Road? Um, he personally doesn't see a lot of bike traffic. And are there open spout, uh, space routes that can go around very narrow sections of South Boulder Road? Um, so uh, so where there isn't room to widen, I guess there's also a third question in there is, does do any of these recommendations involve widening? Sorry to throw a lot at you. I don't, is that for the Lafayette? section because there's definitely not adjacent open space. Um, I think that is a more universal question. Okay. I'll, so I'll speak to it universally and then I do want uh, Boulder County to chime in too if, if Landon or Alex, I think you're both on, but um, overall the goal of this project is to connect uh, on South Boulder Road or with in near vicinity to create a direct connection and really enhance the uh, overall uh, bicycle network, providing 
multiple ways for people to connect if someone wants to take a very direct way that feels comfortable to be able to use South Boulder Road for that. And this South Boulder Road does connect into some other open space and trails and there's some other there are some other routes uh, depends on where people are trying to connect to so that that is uh, we're, we're aware that there's more more options available and that's a good thing. Uh, but we want we want to make this a direct one uh, when it comes to existing bike usage uh, we didn't. Uh, conduct uh, specific counts as part of this effort, but we did look at uh, uh, um, some recreational uh, Strava metro data, which uh, really keeps track of people that are actually using GPS and and, and tracking their own routes. Uh, we do know that the 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 corridor is is popular for for especially from a recreational standpoint. Um, a lot of the existing uh, areas through there aren't extremely. Uh, comfortable uh, for a variety of types of uh, bicyclists, but we want to make it more available for a, a bigger variety and, and types of bicycle users. It's, it's a goal of as far as the effort here. Uh, we are running a little low on time, so I do want to get to more questions, but at first I want to talk to our next couple slides here. I'll just kind of wrap that up and then we can keep talking uh, with questions. So Michael, if you can go to the next slide. Just wanted to kind of let you know that we are uh, we do have our survey open. You can get to that on the project website, which is listed below here, engage.drcog.org slash South Boulder Road Study, um, or you can just Google South Boulder Road Study and you will find it. Um, that survey will be open through June 2nd. It goes over a lot of what we talked about today. Um, we do are incorporating uh, what we're hearing uh, out of this round and really working on our draft and, and final plans coming this summer as part of this effort. We do have two pop-up events coming this weekend. Uh, one in Louisville on Saturday morning from 9.30 to 11.30 at the Recreation and Senior Center, and then in East Boulder Community Center um, that same day from 1 to 3. Uh, we are still uh, working on uh, an event in Lafayette. We were going to be at Earth Day, but that was canceled due to rain. Um, so we're working on an alternate day for that. Um, and so stay tuned on that one. We'll be posting that on the project website. So we look forward to hearing and talking with you all at, at those events. Um, as far as what's coming next after this visioning study. I uh, did want to just take a minute to, to pass it to Landon uh, uh, from Boulder County, um, who can talk a little bit in terms of where Boulder County uh, is planning to study and take this um, in the future um, as we wrap up this visioning effort. So Landon, are you on and able to talk? Or Alex? It looks like he's trying to talk, but we cannot hear you, Landon. Um, it says you are not muted. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Um, I I can I can summarize, Landon. While you please interrupt me if you get your audio working. Um, but just to quickly summarize, Boulder County will be advancing the South Boulder Road Vision next year. They're planning to have a more in-depth study that's going to include a number of things that will carry forward some of the, the vision recommendations that have come out of this effort. Um, so looking at future transit ridership and bus rapid transit uh, type improvements along South Boulder Road, advancing a lot of the bicycle and pedestrian improvement concepts that we've identified in this effort. Um, also taking a look at, at freight needs and then uh, a high level uh, environmental review. So more in-depth analysis of the feasibility of doing uh, these types of improvements. So that that's coming. Um, this is not, as we get a draft plan here, this is not the end of, of studying South Boulder Road. We do want to, we've established the vision here and want to carry this forward, both from Boulder County's perspective, as well as the other agencies involved who will advance uh, improvements uh, in their own process. So with that, Landon, were you able to get your audio working? I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. Testing one, two, three. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Landon Hilliard of Boulder County with the Transportation Planning Division. Nick, you got it just right. Thank you for giving the high level view. I would just add a reminder that this study that we've been doing is basically a visioning plan and it's provided high level concepts and recommendations to allow flexibility for future design. So let's consider it phase one. And then phase two is this transportation improvement program project that you mentioned that takes it to the next level that looks at um, basically 
what was possible now, what is probable to try to narrow the design concepts to some alternatives that can be voted on. But again, this is in the future and there's lots of work to be done. Community engagement will continue throughout to advance, advance the design. And this will be in collaboration with um, all the stakeholders, City of Boulder, City of Lafayette, City of Louisville, RTD, and Denver Regional Council of Governments. Um, I hope that's a helpful add-on to what you said. Thank you for that. Yes, very helpful. Um, we are we are at time here, and this is this is the end of our presentation as far as content today. Um, so if you have to go, please excuse yourselves. I do want to give it another couple of minutes. If there's any questions that came through, we can spend a few minutes addressing those here with you all. Um, but if you have to drop the drop off, thank you so much for attending tonight. We, we do have an interesting question from Dan and Christy. I, but they see three underpasses uh, being considered in Louisville and none in Lafayette. Uh, an underpass between Centaurus and Angevine would go a long way to improving pedestrian safety. Michelle, I'll let you take that one. <laughs> um, we got that feedback through our multimodal transportation plan um, as well. And we would, we are working on a stormwater plan that would probably have to, that underpass would probably have to go in with that. We do not have any information on the feasibility of that underpass, um, but a cross crossing enhancement at that location was identified. Um, underpasses are very expensive. So uh, would that, if it would, if an underpass went in at that location, it would probably be a long-term plan and not a short-term. that uh any follow-up questions on that thanks michelle um i did want to get to howard's question about um the cu south traffic study was done during covid um so the numbers on table mesa drive may have been underrepresented did you take into account the amount of traffic turning west onto table mesa drive i will open and, and pass it to Gene for specifics. I, I wasn't involved in that study specifically or the counts that were taken, but as far as overall counts on South Boulder Road, uh, we, we did look at as part of this effort, both pre-COVID, during COVID and 2022, 2023, even 2024 um, counts and looking at um, streetlight data, which is an online um, kind of big data source um, and sees the trends of traffic changing and how it changes throughout those different time periods. And so we did take that new account into considerations. It's also part of the reason why we're not making specific uh, recommendations on reducing lanes or reconfiguring traffic. That's something that really would really require a detailed traffic operations analysis, which would be conducted before a decision were made on very specific things like that. I know the CU South uh, project is continuing and probably will involve some other traffic uh, analysis that uh, uh, Gene, I don't know if you have any more to say on that in terms of City of Boulder's um, progress with that. No, I think you covered it, Nick. Thank you. And I'll end with maybe the toughest question of all. Given that Excel has preemptive power outages now, um, how are municipalities handling traffic signals on South Boulder Road? Um, particularly in some instances, the neighborhoods still have traffic, still have electricity, but the road, the, the signals are out. Um, it's a note from Sandy. That's that's a good thing to, to ask. And no, I don't have a specific answer from what this project's done. I know every agency will be a little different on how they coordinate their signals and how that works. Um, I do know it's a, a priority thinking through power outages as well as uh, you know, response to other emergencies and things uh, that Louisville experienced with, with the fire there and others very aware of the need for traffic to operate through those. And so I know that, that there's some, uh, some things going on as far as signal improvements and other things to make sure that those are uh, up to the latest of what they need to be. But I don't have specifics on, on that, but um, it's a good, good thing to, for us to Note, so thank you. I can add one bit of assurance to respond to this question. 
The Office of Disaster Management, which is a partnership between the city of Boulder and Boulder County that includes stakeholders around Boulder County, has duly noted the difficulties with traffic operations when electricity has been cut through the XL uh, power, uh, public safety power shutoff system. So that is um, in the review of the latest event, that is a, a situation that is being reviewed and will it be addressed? It's, that's a great question. Well, I think that wraps up our wraps up our questions for tonight. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks everyone for joining tonight, and really appreciate you being involved with this project and, and giving your feedback. Um, just want to encourage you again. Please go to the website and take that survey. That is really helpful for the project team. And please join us at one of the pop up events uh, this weekend if you're available. It'd be great to chat some more on any of your ideas uh, that you want to talk through. So we'll have members from the project team at all of those uh, to do that. So again, thanks so much for joining. Uh, I think uh, our last slide is just contact information for, for Nora. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to, to Nora on the project or you can reach out to me as well. Um, but uh, thanks again and have a great evening.